in the last episode, I spoke to Nesta and the Toyota Mobility Foundation about their $4 million challenge. Through supporting innovations that incorporate intelligent systems, they hope to change mobility forever. My friend Christian, who I've worked with on my accessible travel blog, lives in Barcelona. So I'm giving him a quick call to see what he's saying and his thoughts on the challenge. Hey Christian, good to see you my friend. Hi, Martin, how are you? Cool, well thank you for speaking to me today. I guess if you could start with some of the things about your wheelchair that you would like to be improved and some of the challenges, yeah? The wheelchair of the future is a very important tool for us because it's the key point for being more included in the society. I'd be interested on your thoughts about young disabled people and what they would be needing and wanting from the wheelchair of the future. Yeah, as you know, people, most of us don't want to be in a wheelchair because oh, it's ugly and, and it's not cool. But if the wheelchair is cool, young people want to be in that wheelchair mm. and will be uh, proud. Yeah, so they, they have more positive identity yeah. of being disabled by having a cool wheelchair. We are not in the 90s and we, we need another time of wheelchairs. So thank you for your time today. Thank you. Also. So I'm just going to have a little look on some of the replies to the hashtag and see what some of the people have been saying. Oh, and there's a friend of mine here, Mick Scarlett, who is talking about the need for an inclusive environment as well as innovative technology. So I think Mick could be a really good person to speak to. Hello, my name is Mick Scarlett and I am a wheelchair user. Look, here it is. There they are, wheels. Good to see you again, Mick. Nice to catch up as always. So obviously we're chatting about the Toyota Mobility Foundation Challenge and I saw your video that you uploaded on Twitter. So yeah, it'd just be great to hear a bit more about your ideas, really. When designers are thinking about how to adapt and modify wheelchairs, one, they make sure they've always got disabled experts on board. Absolutely essential. Yeah, absolutely. You need a wheelchair user there to advise. But also to remember that even if they're an expert and they're trained and they're a designer, they've got to think bigger than their own experience. Mm -hmm. You and me are both wheelchair users, and yet we have very different requirements for a chair. To try and design a chair that was like a basic standard chair that you could take apart and put back together to do different jobs. So it could be a standard day chair, then it could be a sports chair, then it could be in a mountain bike chair, then it could look really good for evening. And I think that that would be a way of really opening up the market. Because at the moment, we have to buy a chair for every different job. This is why you need disabled people to be a part of your team. That's very important. Is that we, we know those little niggly issues, mm -hmm. but we can say, don't go straight for the big monster. Don't go straight for robot legs. You know, exoskeletons, they're fantastic. If I stood up on a robot exoskeleton thing, I'd go, and then fall over. I mean, having said that, anyone out there that wants to build a fantastic robot body, you know, Iron Man, all for that. Thank you as always, Mick. It's good to catch up and hear a lot more detail about what this amazing wheelchair can look like. Thanks, mate. It's been really interesting chatting to people from the disability community. I think overall, there are lots of the things I was experiencing and thinking from my personal perspective, but interesting to have that reaffirmed by many people. There's also some really new and other areas I hadn't considered at all. Now I'm on my way to visit Cameron Malik, who is the CEO of Disability Rights UK. It's going to be really interesting to hear his insights as somebody that works with a lot of different disabled people. Good to see you again, Cameron. It's always good to catch up. What would you like to see happening in the future and what issues are they having around mobility? There's a, a lot of work going on in the kind of intelligent systems arena. Um, there are lots of things around autonomous vehicles and other technology that is progressing at a huge rate and it would be great to combine that learning with kind of mobility equipment that disabled people are using. What would you like to see happen that would directly benefit you? Personally, I'm, I'm a real fan of technology. I always have been from a young age. So I'm really excited by the huge innovation going on with intelligent systems. Um, and I'd love to see some of that coming down to 
everyday use that would benefit me as a wheelchair user. I think young people should, would be and should be expecting to see that tech as part of their mobility equipment that they use, whether that be a chair or whether it's some other equipment that aids mobility around the built environment. So um, I, think, I think there's huge potential and exciting times. Speaking with my friends in the disability community, it's clear there's incredible scope for development in mobility, from improving the aesthetics to creating modular solutions. In the next episode, I'm really excited to talk to the innovators who are changing the face of mobility.